Okay, kids, time for bed. Come on, I'll check in in a little bit. Oh, hi. Welcome, you're just in time for the party. Would you like a cheese puff? Hello. I'm sorry to bother you, but I'm having a dinner party and I seem to run out of coffee. You can be anything you want to be there. You can see anything you want to see there. There's excitement in the air for you and me there. Fancy free there. Take your family there. But you've got to be there. Yeah. You've just got to be there. You'll feel free there. You'll be what you want to be. See what you want to see. Seven holes a key there. Be there. It's nearly six o'clock. Pack up and piss off. Yeah, Mystic Meg, I can do without. I like watching her. I think if she says someone wearing a yellow jumper, I think, oh, I wish I had a yellow jumper on. That's how it goes, you know. <laughs> well, the thing she says, it's going to be a bus driver going to win it. Somebody in Capricorn, she always... It's stupid half the time none of them win. I think our predictions do more often than not come true. I think I can do what she's doing. Come out of a steam or whatever it is they have. Do you fancy joining me for a little bit of fun? Games galore. And lots of prizes to be won. You never know who you're going to meet. Kids, it's not going to be f***ing suitable. Oh, we done? I've got some Ubering to do. Hello, good, good evening. Good evening. Welcome to Christmassy Wigan Slingback. There's... The little video you just saw is a little build-up to our next one happening in February. February. Been working on it today, haven't we? We have. We've been... That's, I've still got a bit of a lipstick on, I think. And I've not chopped my nails off yet. Yeah, we've been uh, getting ready for um, launching the next bingo uh, games afternoon, which is going to be February the 11th, Sunday, here in Scarborough. Which isn't that long away, is it? No, so we've got to get it on sale ASAP. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> right, let's have a look who has joined us tonight. Right, do you like this bit where we go through <laughs> who's here? I think you do. Like, Or is it really boring? I don't know. Let us know. Right, who's in? It's uh, Some of the names have dropped off, but I know for a fact that bursting through the doors, right early doors, before we'd even got here, were Tracy30, hello my darling, Mr Venus, hello my darling, uh, Wilhelm Venus, hello, <laughs> uh, Pauline Grant, hello Pauline, and Paul McFarlane! That was me shouting because he's in Capricals. Um, so all of those early door people, hello. And then all the messages all dropped off. Right, next we have in... Ludlow and Lee Bloody Kahoom. Bloody Ludlow. Those troublemakers. Hello, Lee Ludlow. Um, I hope Stuart Kahoom is with you. Uh, and he's feeling a bit better. Let us know. Poker. Oh, Lee Fern Hello, darling. Is, yeah. Lee Fern. Lee Fern is a lurker. Uh, Lee's here a lot, but Lee's um, Lee doesn't comment much. So Lee is commenting tonight. He's so another one of our little Eurovision beauties, isn't he? The Duchess is here. Evening, everyone from a chilly Bolton. We love a bit of Bolton. I like Bolton. I love a bit of Bolton. My my photographer's in Bolton. Is there a bat? Is there a football team called Bolton Wanderers? There is. 
Do you think it's glamorous that I've got a photographer? Yes, in, in Bolton. In Bolton. Uh, right, let's have a look. Brammy D is in, so that's Darren. Hello, our little Bramley apple. Um, I don't know what Brammy D is doing this week. What are you doing this week, Darren? Let us know. He said it's a little, little bottle, did he, of gin? He did. A little, a little gin of gin. A little present. disco bottle of gin come through the post. Um, the post, I opened the door and the postman was there and said, what year were you born? Eh? <laughs> I, said, I, said, I said 1983. And uh, the, the postman said, um, oh, it's just because I've got to make sure you're over 18. I thought, look at this. Do I look that young? 18. Anyway. You. Thank you, Darren, for a lovely bottle of glittery, um, glittery gin, which has disco lights in it. So it's something to behold. Perfect for the uh, Wigan Sling Bag. Uh, Mrs. Bramley is working the Pullman train tonight. <gasps> oh, is she? A little Christmas yeah, dinner. Yeah, so she's like, not only is she cabin crew, she also works the posh train. Is she choo-choo crew? I think she's choo-choo crew on the posh trains at this time of year, doing posh... Posh little. Oh, look at Mr. Darcy's not very well. Mr. Darcy's here, but he's got a cold. Oh. We we know what that's like, Jason. We've had we had it for ages, didn't we? Oh, three, four weeks. Still coughing a little coughing bit, today, but not bad. Lot. Um So I hope you're feeling better, darlings. Thank uh, you. For, thank you for being on the door. The Duchess in Bolton is fingering Jason's diary and wondering when the next Manchester calling is. And Jason says it is the twenty fourth of February. So Jason, right, let people know where they can find out more about what Manchester Calling is, where it's going to be, and how to get tickets. Um, Stuart Bloody Cahoon Stuart is here Cahoon. as well. Nice to see you, Stuart. in. David Moore is in. Hello, David. Uh, Pete Potofsky is in. Hello, dolls. Pete and Sinner have got a lovely new puss cat. Yeah, called Little Red. I've shown you pictures oh, yes. of Little Red. Oh, cute. Mm, she's lovely. She's got a look of Noel Gordon and a little a, a smattering of Princess Margaret about her, the way she's settling in. I love it when you we sort of um, say that some people's pets look like celebrities. Like, um, Deeks' little dog looks like Judy Finnegan. <laughs> no, Deeks' dog looks like Angela Lansbury. Oh, yes. yeah. Deeks' son looks a bit Judy Finnegan. <laughs> Deeks, have you heard that? She might be She in. knows. Uh, it's only because he's got a little bob like Judy. Judy in the early, um, early this morning days. Gary Donnelly is in. Hello, Gary. Hello, Paul Gary. Esselmont is here. Hello, Paul. Uh, any other names popping up? Um, Scylla Black. Dame Scylla Black. Scylla, you're everywhere at the moment, my is darling. here, there, and everywhere. Aren't you? Now, who would have thought that three years ago when we summoned the ghost of Scylla Black from her crypt on a weekly basis to become our cloakroom attendant here at the Wigan Slingback who would have thought that she'd go viral um, and she's everywhere everywhere and it's all the videos that we've shown you years ago so someone today was sharing Scylla's thank you being for being a friend where she's on a little push bike with some policemen we showed you that two years ago in the words of Fanny Craddock I was the first to start this. <laughs> so uh, we love that Scylla's everywhere and we hope that she gets to Christmas number one. Coral Daft is in. Hello, Coral. Hello, Coral. Cheers, my lovely. Uh, she, Paul, um, Paul is in the West Indies tonight. I think that's. I think he's I watching, think he's watching crickets. Watching. Um, <laughs> who else is in? Who else is in? Don't want to miss any names off. Nibbles and Bubbles are Nibbles in. and Bubbles are live, alive. Ooh. Lovely Shari. And I think Chris is in the other bar. He's in the, the quieter snug while Shari's in the party bar. They were ever so Christmassy, weren't they? That's where I did. They were. Cool. Little Christmas jumpers. There were um, sequins involved. Um, let's have a look. Who else is in the bars? Um, Peggy, come here. My dad is in. That means my mum is in as well. Kisses to Hello. You both. I bought them a Christmas electric blanket. It got sent back to Amazon. Cheeky bastards. Uh, <laughs> There's reasons. There's reasons. And I got the wrong size and everything. We've got an electric blanket though, haven't we? Oh. Oh, how we've lived all these years without oh. a lucky blanny. 51 and I've <laughs> never been so bloody warm at night. Oh, honestly, it's amazing. Isn't it? Mm. I, love, I love it. We love it. We don't have we it on throughout it. the night. No. But I think we could. Oh, no. Um, let's have a look. Let's have a look. Gareth is in. Hola, Gareth in Porto. Porto. 
Um, Soda is in. Hello, Soda. Lily Lore. Oh, Soda is. Lily Lore is in. Hello, Andrew. Hello, love. We saw Lily on Friday night for our Oh, she of the year. was festive, wasn't she? She was indeed. Oh, I've never seen anybody so festive. Joel Hazel Dean is in. Hazel Dean, who's leaving who? I've got to learn some other Hazel Dean. What about, what about songs? Um, like the sound of music? Hazel Dean, Hazel Dean. Every Wednesday you greet us. Diangela is in. Hello, Diangela. And Chico, Chico, Chico time. Chico time. Uh, Elaine Pepper Rogers is in. Um, let's have a look. Any other names? Uh, Pip is in. A Christmassy shalom, says Pip. Um, shalom, shalom, my friend. Pip. Um, Neil Sandwell is in that bar and that bar. So Neil oh. Sandwell's in. Marcia Maudsley is in. That's my uh, sister-in-law. And she's with my brother Ewan. Um, I got Ewan a Cold War Steve advent calendar, um, which he's busy flipping the windows of. It's and, called something like 24 Twats of Christmas. And the hilarious Neil Sandwell has written a book. Yes. Which uh, we've obtained a copy of. And Neil, if you want to pop a link in... Now's your charm. Time dolls. Yeah, you can get it from Amazon. Start come, reading. It's very funny. Come next day delivery, didn't yep. it? Yep. And I think even Captain Brad's got one. So it's winging its way to um, Australia. Andrew Chapman's in. A quick visit. He's at work. Hello, Andrew. I hope you just got the hello before you went back to work. Gary Donnelly. I've said hello to you, Gary. Um, NP is in higher MP. Dotty B. Hi all. I've stopped my prison cell block H viewing to tune in. Oh. Never watched it before. It's fabulous. <laughs> now which have you never watched before? <laughs> cell block H or this? Both are fabulous. I'm about to sneeze. Hang on. Uh, um. Oh, here it comes. <laughs> oh, my good issue. Let's go, can we get another, another one? And I've got wearing another one. Uh, who else is in? I'm hiding. You don't want to see my Donnelly, we've said snitty, that. snotty nose. MP, I've MP. said. Can Karen Avey. It all jumped very quickly then. Oh. So I think I've missed lots of people's names. Um, SD&M, Stephen and Chim, Ch- Tim, checking in from Birmingham. Sorry for being late. I knew I was bricking up my windows. Hey, Presto. Hey, Presto. No glass. No draft. No heat loss. No window. No light. No light. Uh... I like the cut of SDM's jib, Stephen and Tim. Nice to meet you both. Seven Network is in. Hello, Seven Network, my love. Martin Hyde. Jamie, have you got lippy on? Probably. Um, I got my nails on. Extra Might 8 is in. Scylla uh, Black is in. Nibbles and Bubbles. She says it makes it sound like we don't go out together sitting in separate bars. Uh, electric Blankets are life changers, says Darren Bramley. Uh, I think that is most probably everyone if i've missed your name off i'm really sorry because it all moved very quickly um darren bramley i've been plowing through lorraine and the loose women this week but he's got a late start tomorrow oh for once he's recording christmas day good morning britain tomorrow wow it's a secret it's all pre-recorded it's It's like the strictly results show should we show people what we were dressed up as today um yeah we can explain this. this room Explain my lipstick. We don't want to talk about this room. Is it there? Yep. Oh, is it there? Hang on. There we go. Ta-da! They were today's little faces. Um, so that's what we were up to. That's going to be live on the uh, Stephen Joseph website very soon. Over in the Facebook snug we have... Philippe Jacques of Fortinbras. Uh, followed by the lovely Sarah Simpson. Uh, Leanne McGee from Australia. G'day, Leanne. G'day, Leanne McGee. From hot New South Wales, Australia, getting into the Christmas spirit. Drinking white wine in the snow. In the uh, sun, that's yep. it. And then a Christmas it. dinner on the beach. Uh, lovely Mark Mundane Pearson has popped in to say hello. Followed by that funny man, Neil Sandwell. And I think Lady V might be popping later. And Lord Henry Medicine Woman's out jogging. She's out running. She's out running or something. We all know what that means. What does it mean? Running a bath? We're not going to say it to his dad. (laughs) Um, uh, Lovely Paul's popped in cello uh, without capicals. Uh, Jason Rigby, hello darlings. How are you? And uh, um, Ian Tushy Rushy. I was a good friend from Hull. 
Ribbons bobbing stuffers in, but not in yet. Uh, lovely Nibbles Perinda. He says he's here till three. Three in the morning. Gabby Chasse is in. A lovely Jill Barron. Uh, I think... Oh, here she oh, is. Oh, here is she in. is. Oh, here she Hello, is. girl, she says. Hello, darlings. Beth and Williams. And Chris Gilbert has popped into Selu uh, with uh, Chris, Wes and Rex the Whippet from Kingscliff. Oh, Mishmash is in, my brother. Good evening, Mishmash. Gabriel Chassé, thank you for your lovely card we got last week. Got a lovely one today, didn't we, from Jason and James. Gabby Chassé says he does love it when everyone, uh, when we hear say everyone's names. Come on, yes, please. it's Come lovely, isn't it? She might as well pop into the other room. Um, oh, where's Mouse? Oh, somebody called Kristen's popped in. Uh, Kristen Walters? Oh, oh, how do you get rid of that? There we go. Uh... Kristen Walters says... My mum always got wrapping paper from the market. As kids look like we'd been down a gold mine after we finished. Hey, We don't know. <laughs> was that something we were talking about, Kristen? It might have been. We, I was talking about getting wrapping paper from the market, wasn't I? Uh, oh, drinks are on Paul tonight. Lovely Jason Brett. As I said, we got a lovely card from Jason and James. Yes, and thank you, loves. It had um, Bender the Creme and Jinx Monsoon on it. It did. It's lovely. Uh, Mark Burgess says hello from Cornwall. Lovely Lee Ludlow thought he'd pop into a night a quieter bar. Oh, look who's popped in. Oh, the Queen of Masham or Massam. It's lovely Yvette Nightingale. Um, lovely to see a new video of it. Oh, she was playing her bells this weekend. <laughs> Isn't she? T- oh, <laughs> wasn't it lovely watching it? <laughs> we love watching your video of that. <laughs> your, your bell ringing. You looked amazing with your fur hat on. Um, and white pleather boots, I think. She Thigh looked, high. She's got great style. Uh... Have I said hello to Bethan and Jason? I think so. You're not said hello to... Tracy Diane Kerr. And... She says she likes your jumper. Marcia Mordsey says she loves your manicure. I think you're going to have to show everyone your manicure, darling. He's good, isn't he? Well, I had them on on Friday. Can you imagine these little chuds having them on? Oh. I'd look like... You know when um, a toddler does her nails because their mum has nails done? And I know, I know that the um, my hands weren't in the photo, but we we also make a little video to go on the video outside, don't we? Outside the theatre. Yes, yeah, yeah. But I use my hands in that, so that's why they're painted. Um, a lovely Marcia's in. She says she loves my nails. Thank you, very glad. I think over here is that the end of our little stream there. I think that's everyone there. Um, Pete, <laughs> Pete Petrovsky is making me chuckle with his comments, but I'm not going to read them out. It's being rude. It's being cheeky. Thora Heard's in, I think. Dame Thora Heard, there she is. She's appeared as well. So we're raising all the ghosts. Um, we would like to say, right here, right now, it is Nigel's 50th birthday. So he gets a double whammy of... That is for the lovely Nigel, and I want because it's his fiftieth. Yeah, we think everybody should sing. I would like to lead happy everyone sing "Happy Birthday" to Nigel. So after three, one, two, three. Very good. Lovely, good singing, Nibbles. Oh, nice. Oh, and some of you doing the and many more, and you Neil, oh. Sand- Neil Sandwell there doing the was, harmony line. Was def- it was lovely. And <laughs> Lee Fern's high notes. So that is oh. for you, lovely Nigel. Yeah, Nigel and uh, Neil pop down from all the way up, up popped from, up from the south west to see us on Friday. Yeah, popped up from Devon all the way up here. Left here on Monday at nine thirty a.m. Got back to their house at about. Three o'clock, another day later. So it took them thirty uh, hours. About thirty hours to get home. They got stranded in Bristol. Um, then they got stranded in Weston. 
then yeah so what a journey to um get up and see us in the quiz we got ever so touch because um andrew and and the boys um came all the way from like preston and all the way down from the southwest to see our little quiz on friday and um, it went well didn't it went really well we will do we'll do a version for you soon, shouldn't we? Yeah, we should do it maybe before Christmas. We'll do that version, that quiz, because it's a Christmassy quiz. So we could do that before Christmas, and then we'll have a quiz, a quiz, Twixmas quiz, mm. most probably, in the middle, maybe. But we'll do something over Christmas. It was fun, wasn't it? It was fun night. Yes. I'm going away, so I'm off to Jakarta with work. Um, which means that I'm a little bit busy still. I don't yeah. finish for Christmas till twenty second or second of December. I mean, I know everyone finishes like then, but because I'm going away, it's different. Oh, we've got a few little birthday coming in from Nigel. Uh, Nooblet six one six is in saying, "I love Ding Dong Dinner Ladies. Thank you very much. We enjoyed making that one. And the outtakes are on there as well. If you want to have a giggle, we included the outtakes on a separate video. Ding Dong Dinner Ladies." So I've got some pictures of the quiz. Um, now, I think most of you have seen these, but I'm going to bring up a couple anyway. We look very, very good, didn't we? Well, the girls did. Yeah, they look very festive. Um, so, Brandy Cobbler had um, little reindeer horns in for the night. I've got a different picture of them both somewhere. This is a good one, isn't it, that Shari took? Yes, I don't know where it is. Um, and Sherry Stump, there it is. There's our, us both. So we had little Christmas lights now, her. Yeah. <coughs> so Sherry had Christmas lights in her hair and I had little um, antlers and ears. Uh, so that's us. And I was in a nice sort of angel outfit, really. So that's my, my it's like outfit. A little feathery white dress, wasn't it? Someone commented on this this photograph. It's very I know him so well. <laughs> I know. Can you see? Can you see my little red tights, my little red shoes? I was a lady in red, wasn't I? You were. With a big pearl necklace. I think we've got your shoes somewhere. I think there's a picture of your shoes, isn't there? Eh? See what mismatch says. You look like Annie Walker, Jamie. Eh? Annie Walker? Annie bloody Walker? What there? You might mean the, the hair curl. You know the... Oh, look at my little mama bear. Mama bear from the Beano. With social between his legs. Um, there's Sherry Stump singing to the crowd. Um, there's our, our winners. Uh, there's Alan making Neil laugh. Um, there's Sherry Stump doing some totting up. There's me. I look like I'm singing to the crowd, but I didn't do no singing. Pip says I'm giving um, him and his pearls a run for the money. Yeah, Pip was there. There's my outfit. There's no. my ensemble. And we had um, we had a little support, didn't we? We had a little uh, comedian called um, Ariel Ebditch, who did a little act in the interval. Yeah, we had an interval act. There she is there. Who do, we think, who do we think we are getting an interval act? A lot of people are saying there is a bit of Annie Walker to me. <laughs> <laughs> there is a bit. It's, it's not wrong. It's it not... might be the you you near the bar. You know that sort of connection. Maybe I think it's the yellow of the hair, most probably yeah. the style of the hair. So yeah, it was sold out, wasn't it? It was a really good night. Lots yeah, of, it was a good laugh. Lots of energy, lots of fun. So we had a, we enjoyed it a lot. Look at us in our little red and white outfits. He's a bit red name so well, isn't it? It is. We should have said that. We should have um, that. Did any of the YouTube side win? Seven Network says no. It was won by Justin and Danny, um, who are they've been to quite a few of the quizzes. They won when you were at the bingo. When you were at the bingo, I think Justin's won the bingo a couple of times. He has um, a curly moustache and a beard, um, and it was his birthday at the last bingo. So Divinity gave him a plate with the cheeky girls on it. Cheeky, cheeky. Um, there is a look at it. Sherry's singing was superb, says Bubbles. Uh, she sang um, excerpts from a variety of Christmas Don't number ones. Don't tell them, because it's going to be, we're going to do the quiz. I know, I'm not, I'm not singing any songs, though, am I? No. Yeah, but the, yeah, you should know your Christmas number ones. Yeah, um, Ian Tushy, it's better being Annie Walker than Ian Sharples. Yeah, well. I'm the Ian Sharples. Alan's the Ian Sharples. Um... 
Oh, Philip Jack Fortinbras and uh, I think Sarah Simpson have mentioned that Jimmy Corkill died. Yeah, Jim Sullivan. Um, so yeah, Jimmy Corkill. Who of we, course, were play- we were playing him in the Brookside Church yeah, song, weren't we? Yeah, it's on our little children-y Brookside song. Um, died last week. So yeah. that's sad because um, yeah, we used to we know one of Jimmy Dean's ex-partners, um, but also I'd met Dean Sullivan a few times. When I was in Liverpool, when I was a wannabe actor in Liverpool, I met him a few times. And he was always really friendly and gave nice advice and stuff. Oh, yeah. People said he's lovely. Yeah. Breaking news. Capital letters. Capital Paul is making his comeback next year to Scarbados. We'll have to get some more dates in the diary then, Paul, for you. Yeah. Well, February the 11th is the first one. Uh, Pip says, does that mean you're going to the February bingo, Paul? Um, oh yeah, lots of people saying about uh, Dean Sullivan, yeah. and how sad it is. Andrew Store has popped in and is giving us a wave. Hello, Andrew. Hello, Andrew. Um, Shari and Chris missed out by one point, I think, on winning. It was two, I think. One or two points. Yeah. If only they'd known that Christmas number one. It would have been different. Uh, Scylla says, does this mean we won't be playing the Brookside song anymore? No, Scylla, you're, we'll play you're dead and we play you all the time. <laughs> we don't mind playing dead people. We shall celebrate Dean in, in that way, won't we? Yeah, we will. We will. Any plans to tour around the UK to other places with your show? No, no plans, but we could do because we have got show like... We've got a show ready to go. We just need somebody with a van. Do you know, we need someone who drives. Who drives, we don't drive. And and we don't have a van. My hair the wrong way. Maybe we'll get, we'll hire Perinda, Perinda Motors. I mean, we're very lucky with the boys and the SJT because we just take stuff down in the trolley. In our Nana trolley. Ross Morgan, where's my hello today? I'm so upset. Ross, hello. Oh, did we miss you off the list? It whizzes by, Ross. Oh, hello, Ross. Sorry, my darling. Ross Morgan, darling. Sorry. Um, Yeah, Chris hired a van didn't he for their their um, theatre show mm. so we could get Chris to get a little charabang and take us round we could maybe go as far as York yeah <laughs> York could be um, easy Gary Donnelly keeps cracking a gag about his birthday and it's been 15 and now 7 you're not going to get a happy birthday until it is your birthday Gary we'll give it your happy birthday when it's your birthday um, so there are no plans to tour next year but it would be great to do it because we could do um, we could do the bingo show. We've got the cell block bingo show, which could go on tour easily. The um, Halloweeny one could go on tour, but you'd have to do that Halloween. And we've got the quiz. The quizzes could go easily. Chris says, "I would happily drive your van. I could be your roadie. You could be. You could be our little roadie. Can you imagine him keeping the um, keeping the what to be? What do you call fans?" What do you call, what's the name for them fans who like are groupies? groupies. Keeping the groupies at bay for us. Pete Potofsky says we need legs akimbo. Yeah. The legs akimbo van. For their show White Christmas. <laughs> We're pouring out little drinks at the moment. Gareth says we could take the show to Portugal. Lots of expats would crave it. Oh. Can you imagine trying to get my wigs to Portugal? I know they need a suitcase of their own, wouldn't they? Look at this one, that one. Oh, no, not that one. Hang on. Oh, I've lost it, the one we... There it is. Where's the one we did today? Ah, I found We've lost it. the photo. I can't find it. There it is in there, I think. There it is. The new new hair, this one. It's lovely because it's, it's all like... Um, it's all like thing at the back, isn't it? Someone like... said you're Bab- Babs Cartland. I am Barbara... Well, I'm not Barbara Cartland. I'm um, Dame... Valerie Cartwheel. And um, I look a bit Bob, Babs Windsor, don't I? You do. I think you look a bit like... <laughs> I might have to land, be a bit Babs Windsor. Landlady. Yeah, I might be, I might be brassy in common. Um, so, yeah, look, uh, we, you know, an hour before that, we were having uh, a tea and coffee with um, Stephen and Martin, weren't we? <laughs> yeah, yeah, we went to eat me um, for lunch. Well, for cake, cake and coffee. Um, Chris says we could sh- do a show in Amsterdam. Amsterdam. Um, I don't know if we could do a show in Amsterdam. We're going to talk. Look, I'm in my Christmas jumper. You are. And look, it's the Home Alone one. I'm in my Home Alone Christmas jumper. 
Um, so we're going to talk Christmas, aren't we? Well, Christmas is nearly here. SCM says there's a, there's a hint of hinge and bracket in that picture. There is, isn't there? So we're going to talk Christmas. <coughs> so essentially, first question that you can answer is... What did you play? I know some of you have answered this already, but what did you play in your school nativity? So what was your part in school nativity? You can be answering that whilst we have an advert break, yeah? Yeah. So I'll play some adverts. You'll enjoy these ads. It's not necessarily ads. This is something different this week. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, what part did you play in the school nativity? And we'll read some out. Wow. Talk about sheer terror. Well, what did you think so far? Listen, this side is about to come to an end, but I want you to be sure and flip over to the other side where the best of Hollywood beckons. Um, I'm going to freshen up a little bit, so I'll see you on the other side. Honey, why don't we get some more wine, uh, more hors d'oeuvres, more everything. Okay. Okay. Special Christmas Pebble Mill at One Party! And uh, finally tonight, with the Christmas carol singing season well underway, they've had the wettest carol concert ever in Gloucester. And it wasn't even raining. Graham Purchase reports. Very soggy Santa there and his helpers. Let's hope that clarinet doesn't get rusty. And let's hope they all don't, don't get cozy like me. I hope to see you again around the same time tomorrow night. Until then, bye bye. Live entertainment for Christmas Day on BBC One. A big Christmas hello from the television Santa. Hello. I've got some very important news for you. This Christmas Day morning, I'm going to be up the top of the telecom tower presenting a live BBC spectacular with pop videos, guests dropping in, your favourite clips from BBC television during the year, and a helicopter with a camera on board. Our hollycopter will be going everywhere, live phone-ins, and lots, lots more. Don't miss it. Now then, little fairy, it's Christmas time. What would you like to get? I'd like to get off your knee. Noel Edmonds. Santa's Grotto. No, I'm not. Join Noel Edmonds for a live, live Christmas breakfast show at five past eleven on Christmas morning. Tomorrow on BBC One, entertainment for Christmas with Keith Harris and Orville. What are you? (laughs) I'm stupid. (laughs) There's airborne comedy with the aerobatic antics of the Dingbats. And not to be outdone, Cuddles. I hate that. Uh, Orville sings with the roly polies. Together with music from Alvin Stardust, that's the Keith Harris Christmas Show tomorrow at 5:20 on BBC One. Christmas entertainment on BBC One. Wayne Sleep leads the company in the Hot Shoe Show. Tonight at 11 o'clock on BBC One. And now, 
I think it's time for the weather, Frank, isn't it? <laughs> Mike, thank you very much. Sweeter sounds from our weather window. Good morning, Frank. Yeah, something sweet about knocking other people, isn't there? From satellite over the last 12 hours, you can see how the rain moved into Britain, but also the next batch, this is important, it's rain for Christmas Day. <laughs> Good morning to you. It's just turned 8 o'clock. It's Christmas Eve, Monday the 24th of December. You're watching BBC Breakfast Time. A very good morning to you. The headlines today... I'm back. And so are you. You know, I feel as though I know you. <laughs> well, at least we share some of the same tastes. Oh, I'm sorry about the cheese puffs. I ran out. But I still have quiche. Oh, lots of memories there. Something a little bit different. The hot Shoe Show looked good, didn't it? Hot Shoe, sh hot shoe Show looked ace. I'd, I'd love, love a bit of that. watch that, wouldn't you? Bonnie Langford giving it like I love a bit of Bonnie and I love a bit of Wayne. And a bit of Keith Harris. All right, let's have a gander. What? What? We have. So. So what did we get? We have. Uh, Cilla Black says she sang in her nativity. I wonder what song she sang. Mary's Boy Child by Boney M. Po possibly. Tracy 30 was a shepherd. Mm. Nibbles and Bubbles. So Shari was an angel because I was average height and I matched the other angels. Oh. Claire B80 played a Swiss girl. Oh. Saucy, a saucy nativity. Perhaps Christmas around the world? Um, Scylla also adds that she did play the angel because she has the voice for it. <laughs> Darren Bramley did the lights I'm in not his school, school I'm not, nativity. I'm not surprised there. Um, SD, SDM, I never played a thing. This was the 1980s, so there was no everyone has a part with the bulk of the school. The bulk of the school played trees and stuff. Um, uh, no, that was there was none of that. So it was just, you were either a main part or you weren't in it. Uh, Karen Avey, I played one right. of the children in Scrooge. Um, so most probably one of Bob Cratchit's kids. My one line was, shut the door, it's cold outside. Oh, I hope you did a bit of Larry Grayson. Shut that door. Neil Sandwell, I was a shepherd and we couldn't get the crepe beard off, so my mum had to shave me. <laughs> What's a crepe beard? It's like a little sort of stick of a beard. Uh, Pete Potofsky was a pirate and borrowed his sister's hoop earrings. Oh. <laughs> what, what was the name of the dinner lady, Pete? That The young one that you used to go and chit-chat to through the window. I bet she'd have a hoop earring she could lend you. Um, let's see, lots of talk about uh, Pebble Mill. Um, Lee Fern was one of the three wise men and his gift was mur. Mur. Um, what's mur? I don't know, but they took all gold and Frankenstein, didn't they? Frankenstein's like a scent, isn't it? Yeah. Well, what's mur? Mur, is it a herb? I'm not sure. Uh, Pip, I was Jo... Oh, listen to Pip! Oh, listen to Pip. her! I was Joseph for four years running, with my best friend Rachel playing Mary. Oh. I was very close to a fifth year, but my mother took us to the continent for the winter. Oh, <laughs> Skiing. <laughs> Pip's very BBC. He's very BBC. Um, I love that Pip monopolised the nativity. I bet people hated Pip and Rachel for taking the main part every year. They've got Lily Law got up to. Lily Law. I was in the band every year and my skills with the xylophone were second to none and my castanets on Little Donkey would knock you bandy. I bet she did that for five years. Um, BG Bear was a tree in the nativity. He was in one of those years where no one got missed out. Um... Alex Johnson, I played a Roman soldier. I was gutted I had no lines. Um, I just had to march to the end of the hall. That was it. Uh, Paul McFarlane, I wanted to be a Christmas tree so I could branch out in oh, entertainment. Boom, boom. I bet he's got it right in Christmas cracker jokes. Lee Fern, so he's now deviating from nativity mm. to include. I was also one of the policemen in Mikado in secondary school. I know it's not Christmas related, but what the hell. Oh, I'd love to see him dressed as that. Now... You? 
Are you sure you weren't a policeman in Pirates of Penzance? Because they have a song. A policeman's lot is not a happy one. Don't they? Don't know. I don't know if there are the police in Mikado, Lee Fern. So what over in Facebook? What have we got over here that people were... Hang on, let me just oh. get to the end of these ones. Um, Darren Bremley's wondering if I put more lippy on. No, it's just... Um, you had cracked lips, haven't you? Cracked lips. I've got a cold, cracked lips and a bit of lippy on. Um, Ali Bally says, My kids asked what a Scylogram was today. Do you still do them, Scylla? Um, oh, okay. Uh, Stuart Cahoon, I was a shepherd. I was told off by my P3 teacher, Miss Muir, for singing ahead of everyone else and pushing my way to the front. Good boy. And Pete Potofsky says, The dinner lady who would have had hooped earrings was called Beautiful Young Model. <laughs> Right, let's have a look. Um, here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. This is it. Chris Perinda. You played the second innkeeper. Was there a second one? Um, he had one line, there's no room at the inn. I wonder how many innkeepers there were. Oh, got so to I met... Because so you tried a few. Oh, yeah, of course. Sorry. Sorry, but Chris. Yeah, I know what you mean. I wonder if like the third one was the stable one. Yeah, it must be, mustn't it? Like, there's no one. Really, yeah, go in there. Yeah. Uh, Philippe says, um, can't remember what he played uh, when he was little, but it uh, must have been unnoteworthy. But when he was 16, he did work experience at a nursery and got to play the, the donkey. Wonderful. Mark um, was one of the shepherds, and he upstaged the other two. He upstaged the other two because his sister bought him traditional clothing from a trip to Yemen. So he was actually bedecked as an authentic Middle Eastern shepherd, whilst the other two were in their dressing gowns wow. and tea towels. Um, Andrew Storr says he can't remember school nativity, but... Um, he recently did two, two outdoor-style outdoor nativities. Dibley style. And played a Baldrick-esque soldier. Um, Sarah says she was an angel in her Christmas play. Uh, uh, Andrew said 2010 it was so cold the soft drinks the snow machine and the actors were all frozen um, Ian Tushiwashi says um, no that's the Christmas stuff ok yeah, yeah. Uh, Gabriel Chasse says we should do a take off of Noel Edmonds you got I think Ga Gabby Chasse has most probably never seen Noel Edmonds before um, Yvette says um, she can't remember what she played in the school uh, play however uh, she played the Archangel Gabriel. That's a big part. Postman and Joseph. Um, we had two people playing a camel, uh, which a real donkey fell in love with. Thank God there was a wall behind between them, or else the back end could have been in oh, trouble. Oh, a little, little, ran, little randy ass. Um, uh, Chris Perinda's loving that we played a little clip of Bonnie Langford. He's got a soft spot He's for her, crush on there. Ribbons Bobbins Duffer has ar arrived and would like to announce that he was one of Herod's men and he wore a brown dress thing. I was mortified. I had to wear tights in a, a um, the Christmas play, I think. Fishnets. One of them. <laughs> I borrowed them. Um, and it was Papa Panoff, our Christmas play. Eh? Papa Panoff? <laughs> one year we did Papa Panoff and the next year we did the one where I had a, a um, time machine for Christmas. Were you the main... Not in Papa Panoff. I bet you were in the time. Uh, Papa machine. Panoff was the main. I think I was just one of the Jesus like tableau. Mm -hmm. uh, here we go. This one. Uh, Greatfield High. We did a more mature version of the Nativity. I was the innkeeper, offering Mary and Joseph um, a barn with hot running cow dung. Well, Ian, I was in Dracula at Greatfield, and I played the hero. And I fell in love with a heroine. Emotional Urban Homestead is here. Hello, Emotional Urban Hello, Homestead, darling. Caroline. Um Pip, who monopolised Joseph with his friend Rachel playing Mary for four years running, would like to add, my mother, of course, was on the board of governors. She was one of those. Imagine a Yorkshire hyacinth bouquet. <laughs> um, Ross Morgan, forget that. I was born a drama queen. I've always been a drama queen. Um, let's have a look Ali Bally daydreaming when putting hands up for no parts no one was putting their hand up so I ended up being an ugly sister um, Lee says there were three of us dressed in red it might not have been a policeman it was 1996 it could have been wrong <laughs> there's most probably a policeman in the Mikado um, I think that's everyone's uh, Philippe just popped in and said he was a gingerbread man 
in a production of Hansel and Gretel. In the big school. Mm. Um, our local church organs player wrote it and roped in loads of little kids to the chorus. To the chorus. He then play, plays Wid- uh, Widow Twank at the age of ten. And look at Tushy Rushworth says, I've actually heard about... Oh, it's gone. It's been deleted, Tushy Rushworth, or you've deleted it. He said he's heard about the Dracula play and it was very good. Yeah. I used to kiss the heroine and she'd put, she'd have freckles on her face. And for some reason the freckles used to come onto my face. Uh, you must have been well snogging her or something. No, it was then. a kiss cheek. I remember it coming onto my... Um, I shouldn't say come onto my face, should I really? No. Secondary school. Well, the panto. The nat- there was no nativity in secondary school. It was like, it was like musicals in secondary school. Yeah, we school did Christmas for us. plays, I think. Or... Yeah. Panto. We've done panto. Alan's been the panto dame. I've been Tinbad the tailor. I've been. Uh, I was. Uh, I was man in Ali Barber, wasn't I? You had a lot of parts, didn't you? Yeah. Um. Josh Spencer, I'd love to play a panto dame. I had an audition for Bradford Alhambra, but they said I need more experience. The thing with pantos now is they have a panto dame and they keep them year after year after year, so it's hard to get a panto dame job now unless somebody either goes on holiday for Christmas or goes over the bridge. Trisha Rushworth would like to know, who is your drama or English teacher, Alan? Mr Bowman. He was very good. He's one of my favourite teachers. And Mrs. Curry was the music teacher. What was your first pantomime? Who was in your first pantomime you saw? I didn't go see pantomime. Never ever? Well, I'm asking you then. Who was in your first pantomime that you saw? Um, I used to go to the Everyman pantomime in Liverpool. We went every year. And that was like funky pantomime. So there were no famous people in it. Like modern. Sinbad from Brookside was in it every year. No, it was just a bit funky. It was a bit like, a bit more like the SJT panto, I think. It was a bit, well, no, it was like, do you remember there was a show in the West End called Return to the Forbidden Planet? Mm. And it had like rock and roll music. Mm. The Everyman pantos were exactly like that. Well, I, w- I once on stage. auditioned for a show called uh, Four Dames in Search for Panto. Do you remember? And I thought, oh, I'll go along as Les Dawson, do all the lads, Les Dawson stuff, um, which I did on the day for the audition. It was like a day of workshops. One of those. So I was doing the Les Dawson all day. And then I sort of realised throughout the day, this isn't That's not the what sort of panto. Wanted. It's like the history of panto. Yeah. And though I and though I entertained for the day, I realised it wasn't for me. Toshi Rushworth says, Mr Bowman was my favourite teacher too. Sadly, he left a year after I started. He and he went to work for British Rail. <laughs> Did he really? Yeah, he used to be ticket um, inspector at Hull Station. Jason Darcy, Bristol's panto this year is fab. Faye from Steps and David Suchet. Camp and very rude. Ooh. Is that what you were watching the other night, J- Jason? I saw you bathed in blue. And I hate to say this, but that's where you caught your cold. Pantos are a hotbed for kid, kid flu. Um, SDM, we only ever got taken to cheap Amdram pantomimes. Did you not even go to cheap Amdram pantos? No, well, we didn't have the money to do pantos, dolls. Claire B80, my first one was Cinderella. I'm sure Babs Windsor was the fairy godmother. Now, my mum my mum and dad are watching, and I don't know if they don't like commenting, but we went to see a proper panto, and I think Les Dawson was in it. Mm. Possibly Bergerac. But I'm pretty sure Les Dawson was definitely in it. In in, in Les's book, he has, there's a photo of him with um, John Nettles. I think we friends. went to see that. And then when we came home, there was a lot of fog on the motorway. And I remember my brothers being very scared of it. Ewan's watching. I remember them being scared, timid. I think this is true. Mum might correct me. I just did the whole sleeping thing. You know, when you fall asleep in the car. I particularly liked falling asleep in the Volvo. I loved this as a kid. Because. <laughs> did you ever have this? You must have had this. We didn't have a Volvo doll. <laughs> no, but when you fell asleep in the car. and we you didn't got, have a car. You got carried to bed. No. I loved it. We just got kicked and went, get up there. I think my dad. Get up there, you lazy bastard. Dad's watching. I was very rarely asleep. I just loved the whole act of being carried to bed. Who does it now? <laughs> I do. I'll fall asleep on the sofa and wait for Alan to gently carry me to bed. I'll most of it, at Christmas Day, if we're at Martin and Stevens, I might try and have a snooze and see if anyone carry sweeps to me up to bed. Um, Pete Potofsky, Richard O'Sullivan. My mum took me up the West End as she was in love with him. 
Um, BG Bear went to see Terry Scott as the Dame and June. Ed Stupot Stewart was Mother Goose and it was in Wimbledon. JPV, I was in Panto for three years in a row with Gladys Ambrose. I love seeing that Brookie clip. She was so lovely. Oh, JPV, look at you. Where, where have you been? You, we've, we're always talking about Julia Brogan. I adore her. Was that in, in Liverpool? JPV is JPV's also got um, a thumbnail of Long Distance Clara from Pigeon Street. I think I found my kindred spirit. Um, Lily Law, first one with celebs was Aladdin at Manchester Palace. It had Paul Nicholas, Paul Shane, baby, Sylvester baby. McCoy, and the wonderful Eartha Kitt. Wow. Changed my whole outlook. Oh. Uh, Angela Larson has popped in. Hello, Angela. Coral Daft, Babes in the Wood with Danny LaRue. Oh, another, another gem. Um, Alex Johnson, I saw Cinderella and someone had massive long socks on that stretched the length of the stage. It's all I remember. Sadly, sadly, it was the night Dustin G died. My dad read it the next morning in the paper. Did he die on stage? Was that in Southport, Alex? I think he died in Southport. Neil Sandwell, I saw Danny LaRue and Norman Wisdom. Oh, it's moved. In different pantos. Lily Law, Les Dawson and Bergerac did Panto in Manchester. That's where I saw it. I think they did it together for quite a few years as well, didn't they? David, my dad, says it was Eric Sykes and Jimmy Edwards. Panto oh, wow. in Manchester. I don't know how either of those people Jimmy's are. Jimmy's got like a big white moustache. Was it Le- Les, and Les Dawson and Bergerac, though? Um, Simon Jones says Bergerac. I hope there was a lot of leather blues on action. Yeah, Bergerac and um, Christine Cagney. They could have a little leather blues on off, couldn't they? They could. Um, Dad says, yes, it was very foggy on the way back. Uh, BG Bear, last panto I saw was Sunderland Empire, Snow White with Mark Little, Joe Mangle from Neighbours, and Frankie and Bobby from Home and Away. (coughs) Oh, yeah, I remember them. Bobby couldn't sing and it wasn't that good. I remember stars from Australian soaps coming over and doing pantos. It was a big thing, wasn't it? Yeah, Lily Vern loves our tops tonight. Very colourful. Uh, David Moore, Jimmy Clitheroe in Humpty Dumpty at the Coventry Theatre. I think Darren Bramley said something as well. I think Darren Brambles said earlier, <coughs> and it might have been on a, a message, um, they used to go for a Christmas night out and then stop for chip, fish and chips in New Cross. Oh, really? The one that um, Paul McCartney used to? Might have been. Go to. Yeah, we used to go to a fish and chip shop in New Cross and um, Paul McCartney used to stop there with um, Linda. Yeah. Well, not Linda, Heather. It used to be on the, on route, on the route on the way home, wasn't and it? And then you could buy the Paul Paul McCartney special, which was yeah, whatever he'd whatever bought. Whatever he had. But you can also buy a Scylla special in what, in a chip shop. I've got, the, I've got the menu, but I can't remember where I put it. What was it? Um, orange and Oxo and Batter? Oh, no, I wish it was. Um, lots of people saying... Things. My dad says it wasn't Les Dawson or Bergerac, but we did see Toad of Toad Hall at the Liverpool Playhouse. <laughs> we did go to the theatre a lot. Me and my mum went to see Gypsy at the Liverpool Playhouse. We loved it. I think it changed me. Mm. I think that's when I realised. Uh, <laughs> Jane Wagner, the Theatre Royal in St Helens, seeing Panto, Cinderella. We went up lots of tiny stairs Ooh, and goodness. never caught the sweets they threw up to the back. Oh, oh, too far away. Neil Sandwell's also said he saw Heather Peggy Mountain Panto. When we did Panto, do you remember I was throwing out uh, roses, yeah, roses chocolates, and the director, who's a bit, bit of a tight, tight-fisted person, he said, "Well, can you not throw as many out?" And I thought, "I'm not, I'm not, I'm not just going to throw three sweets out." So I, was just, I, so I kept on doing it. In the end, we ran out of roses. Oh, did he give you chew it? Chew it. So it's me throwing chewits out in early January. Like, I'm very sorry, kids, but there's a few chewits. Can you imagine how, how like hard and sharp a chewit is? I mean, he was raking being launched. it. Launched, wasn't he? When we did Panto, we had because we were like Alan was a dame and I was like the the audience friend, so like the one who you know, hello kids, you got to hello shout kids. my name if anything happens. Hello kids. We had to do the thing where you split the audience in half and then sing songs. So what my half sings something, Alan's half sings something. The song we had was Chick, 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 Chicken, Lay a Little Egg for Me. On Alan's side of the audience, on the front row, we'd already clocked her post-interval, this was. We, so didn't, in, we, we didn't know who she was. Interval, either. we'd had a chat about her, was a woman with a face like this. 
<laughs> and she, had, like, she was really well to do. She had flat brown hair, <laughs> and she wore like a um, a waxed um, gilet <laughs> or a body warmer. <laughs> And a little sort of cravat. And now we're singing, chick, 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 chicken. Lay a little egg for me. There were movements. And she was going, chick, chicken, <laughs> chick. She did like, like, chicken. highlights. She was like, egg. <laughs> and there was me saying, um, little, oh my God, have you seen her on front row? She was the mayoress. Lady mayoress. <laughs> She had a little necklace on, did she? And the lady mayoress too. Out she goes. This pub's shut. I thought she was like a farmer's wife. That was fun, though, wasn't it? It was very good fun. We did lots of naughty little games. And then before Panto, he said, "Oh, if you come like a week earlier, um, we do like a Christmas a cabaret where they all have Christmas dinner." And we did, it was that was about two or three nights. That wasn't it. And uh, we did loads of Les Dawson sketches and two Ronnies. She lit, just lifted loads of sketches from telly. And then um, you had to. Re- he made us read like an excerpt from a Christmas Carol, didn't he? Yeah. And I, for some reason, I don't know why I said it, but I said, "Bob, scratch it." And I kept saying, "Scratch it," and people were laughing. I'm going, "What are people laughing at?" He, he knew. What and he obviously, was doing. it was the the Muppets, of course. It's scratch it, Muppets. No, it's called Bob Cratchit in the Muppets. Oh, is it? Well, yeah, something was said, scratch it. Some you comedy. Just thought it was funny. Oh, and then I got the giggles, didn't I? Yeah. Let's have a look. We've got some um, other news coming. So, Nibbles played a male maid Marion in a panto back when I had long blonde hair. Oh, I wish he'd played female one. Well, no, I think he was. He played maid, maid Marion, but he oh, was a female. He, I think he meant a male I think version. You were, you were, you were all playing a woman. <coughs> um, Gemma, Gemma from the other side of Aldi, she saw Barry from Heidi High, my first panto dame. He nearly took my eye out throwing sweets. May remember said she'd uh, they'd love to go to an adult panto. Uh, Mark Mondeo, we went every year with my nan. We always saw the Manor Operatic Society in Sheffield. The theatre director was also the dame. Um, every year it was magical. One year they had shy horses on stage. Oh, they got to do a little doo doo on the stage. Oh, Brian Platt sounds a bit like Mary Chipperfield <laughs> with yeah. cruelty with, with choppers. <laughs> Uh, Philip Jack, uh, for the last few years we've gone to Southport for Panto on Christmas Eve, usually featuring Sir Sam Kane. I think he's... Uh, oh, Lin- is he from Brookie? Linda Lusardi's husband. Isn't he like the hairdresser? Yeah, but the theatre's closed down, so this year it's Wizard of Oz with the Vivian as the Wicked Witch of the West. Oh, wow. Um, Tushy Rushworth went to every Panto in Hull for about two years, uh, lots of the stars, and Rolf Harris. Uh, for 12 years, he says. Uh <coughs> Tushy, last panto I went to see was the Chuckle Brothers when I was working at Wandsbeck Primary School. I think I was more excited to, to see Barry and Barry and Paul than the kids were. Um, sorry to leave early. Bethan's left early and Leah McGee has left early. There's no, you don't have to don't, apologize, don't apologize my darlings. Bethan's got a migraine coming on. Ooh, oh, Bethan. Sorry. Lots of hot water in a washing up bowl, as hot as you can get it, and put Ooh. your feet in it. It's an old wives' tale. Old wives... Is that the right word? Old wives' tale, but it works because it takes the blood away from your head. Um, right, let's have a look. I've missed some over here. Uh, Pip says, I was a panto virgin until 2014 when I saw Aladdin at the Old- Oldham Coliseum with Fine Time Fontaine, Ooh. who we heard is quite the legend. Um, Pete Petofsky says, oh, chew it. <laughs> oh, you and your chew it. Jason says, I love chew it. Who remembers Pacers? Oh, I do. Three spearmint stripes. I don't remember Chasers. Pacers. Uh, Pacers. Alex- Chasers. Alex Johnson. I also saw Aladdin with Mr. T as the genie. Oh. They played the A-team theme literally every five minutes. Um... Simon Jones says, Scylla must have done Panto. Scylla's gone very quiet. I'm sure she must have done. I can see her in a little I bet Scylla's frock re- coat, can't you? Scylla might be researching on Google. A I'm sure Scylla did Panto. Um, Darren Bramley, I used to do I used to do Tunic on GMTV. And our presenters, Jamie and Anna, used to appear at local Pantos. I went to watch them one year and she primed the guys after the slush scene to attack me with a surprise. Tunic? I think that's a misspelt. Um, Sound? Grumpy Poo, my two friends do a great sissy and Ada. They know all the lines. We know all the lines as well, don't we? Mm -hmm. 
Um, off topic, has anyone else discovered Talking Picks TV? <laughs> Says um, Ali Bal. Was that Ali, Ali Bali? Yeah. Right, so we've done Nativity, we've done Panto. Timmy Alexis Carrington Ward is in with Newsflash. I saw Scylla in Panto. Oh, can you remember which one, dolls? Scylla is saying, why would I do Panto? Timmy's saying he saw Scylla in Panto. We need more news, Timmy. We need to know the part. We need to know the theatre. And the year. And the year. If you're willing to share the year. We need to know the year. Jane Wagner says, can we talk about the Doctor Who Christmas specials? Well, you can talk amongst yourselves about them, but Alan's not seen them. I've seen the one with the little furry thing. Um, but yeah, we've not seen them. Uh, if Mr. T's genie didn't emerge from a teapot, they've missed an obvious gag, says uh, Tushy. Um, <coughs> Scylla, your life is one big panto. Seven Network says off topic, but this weekend it's 35 years since an audience with Victoria Wood first aired. Really? Oh my. Now that's the one where Lisa Goddard sat with her identical sister, isn't it? Mm. <laughs> but not Rita asking about paper bills. No, that's Shelley Bassey. Yeah. <coughs> right. Timmy Alexis Carrington Ward, news in, Cinderella, and he went back to her dressing room afterwards and all. Oh, well, there you go. There's the... Now, we've got to remember, Timmy was a little hot shoe shuffler himself back yeah. then. He was a... Um, dancer, wasn't yeah, he? Yeah, a dancer. He was very close to being in the Rod Hull and Emu, uh, somebody at the door. Um, but I think he he was... Was he pipped at the post, or did you just decide not to do it? So it would have been like, Hi, my name's Katrina, and my name is Timmy. But I don't think he did it. I wonder whether he'll recreate that for us one day, on his show. What, Hi, my name's Katrina? We should do it. We could. We might have to do that. We could do all their little names. Hi, my name's Katrina. What are we going to recreate? We said something the other day, didn't we? I don't remember. We've, we've said a few things we're going to recreate. A um, lot of love for the Doctor Who Christmas special with the uh, Meep. Uh, Tushy Rushworth loved it. Uh, I think Gemma loved it. Gemma from To The Side of Aldi. And we've not, I've not watched the other one. I might watch it. Um... Jason says, Scylla, you've done a few pantos, and he's included a link to Panto Archive of Scylla. Um, Scylla says, I did Jack and the Beanstalk. She also says, I, I also did a record-breaking run of Aladdin. I think Scylla, the, go the ghost of Scylla's had a little bit of a Google. She's looking them up now, because <laughs> you've forgotten about them. Timmy's burst in saying, I was an original emu kid, I'll have you know. Oh, so you actually did it? He was never on the programme. Oh, right. We might have to... Let me get my phone out. If he's in the bath... Right, Timmy, if you're not in the bath, you can give get us a little... Get on the blower. You can give us a call and let us know what the heck's going on. We need to know. You don't even know... You can just use your voice if you're in the bath. We want to know... When were you an emu dancing child, and what did you um, what did you he's, do? He's actually put a little link on that, and the uh, yeah the the link to Scylla's panto. Scylla, your link's is on. been copy and pasted all over on in both rooms tonight. Michael Darrington says, "Is that an elf on the shelf behind you? Can you see it?" Oh, it's a little um. No, it's a little tra <laughs> it's a little it's trans doll. It's a, it's a non non-binary doll. Yeah, non-binary doll. Yeah. Hold that in case Timmy finds. It came with wigs, didn't it? Yeah. Oh, what do I do? Do I accept? Answer. Yeah, accept. Answer. Answer. Oh. Hello, hello, love. hello darlings. Hello. Hello. Oh. Here he is. There we go. Let me, turn my, let me turn my volume down. Here she is. Here she is. Hang on, I'm turning my volume down. Um, I'll have you know. YouTube evidence of me dancing with Dana. <laughs> I think I've seen that, haven't I? Yes, thank you. She's got with it. Katrina, with all the emu kids. Timmy's got legs I for days. Do, I didn't do the um, windmill, uh, the windmill, but I was original before that. <laughs> Why did you not do pink windmill? Was there a scandal? 
I moved on. I was, probably, I was doing the meaning of life. No. Every sperm is sacred. Would we be able to? Would we be able to spot you in that, Timmy? Yes. <laughs> in what? Emu or uh, emu or um, Monty Python? Yes. And what about? I've got coming on my radio show, Sean Maguire, who also was in the scene with me. Sean Maguire off of EastEnders and Grange Hill. Yeah, and then went to Netflix um, once upon a time. Did you remember watching that? When oh, I didn't there? watch that, but I know the program. Yeah, yeah. And were, were so you, you in a, and were you in an advert as well? Finger of fudge or something like that? Or <laughs> no, I actually always looked like him. That one. That's everyone always used to say that was me. <laughs> but no, but I honestly did so much as a child. Because I went to um, Corona, which is no more. But how funny that all those people were in that in that film. You honestly, honestly can see me. I stand at the end of the staircase, and I haven't changed a bit, thanks to my surgeon. <laughs> <laughs> to give a little wink to camera. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, boys. Yes, my yeah. love. I need your address because I'd like to send you my. I'd like to send you a lovely Christmas card, which are on my. I'm not going to show you what they are, but they're personalised. Oh. They're homemade. Well, let's exchange our addresses so on to... on WhatsApp. Let's not do it here. <laughs> with... <laughs> You'll end up with all sorts of muck on your right. doorstep. <laughs> all right, love. There we go. That's fine. That's quite good. I can really see myself. All right, just tilt me forward a bit. Yeah, you, 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 get, you get a shadow then. We can see your lovely Christmas no tree. Eye. Yeah. Yeah, look. Look at that. What about... So what about there's not one bauble on that? Because David said, I'll pay you if you do the Christmas tree because he's so lazy. And I just thought, and you'll probably understand this because we're all old girls now. I just thought I can't be bothered to be putting it all away. So I've just put lights on. Have you, now, have you, hung, your lights, have you hung your lights up and down or wrapped them round? I wrapped round. I've oh. done a wrap round. Up and down's up the down. way to go, love. They come off a, a treat. They come off a dream. Oh, well, that'll be... But, That'll be for next year if I can be bothered. <laughs> Honestly, it was a toss up whether I was going to do it at all. That I've got to that age. We're that thinking I really the same. Just cannot be bothered. Yeah, we're going to have a smaller one this year, aren't we? Yeah. So, did you see that I went to that pantomime? Adult pantomimes are the way forward. There was a gay adult pantomime at um, Charing Cross Theatre. So rude, but I loved it. Oh, and Timmy, tell everyone who was like three. Watched. Who was three rows behind you? Not only three rows behind me at the party as well, but how good am I that I just thought I do not want to ruin another... You know when they say, don't meet your idols? So I didn't go near her. Joan jo- Collins. Joan Collins. I honestly Collins. was just beside her. And now who did but who did you was meet? I really who... proud of me for not doing it because I think if she had been a bit dismissive or something, I would have had a horrible Christmas. Yeah. So I left it. And I knew um, who she was with... Um, Andrew Pierce, and I went to hear him say hello when she went off, and then I, I spoke to him afterwards, and I said, I just didn't want to meet her, and he goes, well, she would have been lovely, she's my friend, so I could have, that's, oh, I'm, the no. only reason I've said that is, I could have, but I chose not to, do you go think on. that's why? Go on, tell us some of the celebs you did meet that night. Cheryl Baker, Baker. Well, I've met, been on my bed, Mike Nolan, Mike Nolan. Lizzie Cundy, I had to be careful with that name. <laughs> but it was Re- Ingrid Tarrant she's coming on my show Ingrid Tarrant so yeah. it was a nice dude but I honestly recommend because Dave what about this David went to a pantomime on his own when I was away and halfway through the pantomime you do always think oh we've lost you love why have I boxed out there we're, we're losing <laughs> oh, you have I been told yeah, you go in. All right, darling. All right, well, Merry Christmas. Give me your give me your address so we can exchange Christmas cards. Bye. See you later. Bye, darling. Well, so we but that ended up just being a chat with our our friend, didn't it? Um, emotional Urban Homestead. Caroline says she's hung her lights up and down. Mm. It's, a, it's a top tip from us, isn't it? Yeah. Pam, I should do a tip on just that. Just comes off, doesn't it? Angela says that's a great Christmas tree tip. Um. We've got some more Pam Pie videos on their way. So you've got to watch it. Um, 
Tushy Rushworth is off to watch The Meaning of Life again to spot Timmy and Sean <laughs> Maguire. Um, SDM says, I met Cheryl Baker when she was at the counter paying for stuff at the British Home Store's Christmas shop in 1996. Uh, we are, it's about t- 10 past nine. Um, we're, we're, should we have a little finale? We'll have a little, little advert. We'll have a little them. mini lock in. And then we'll have a little chat afterwards. Because we're both pooped tonight. We'll be back after the little song. Here's a little song. So anyone who wants to go to bed, off you go to bed now. Thank you for joining us on a Wednesday night. And we're back next week, aren't we? You're if you here? want a Christmas tree, if you want a Christmas tree, a Christmas tree, if you want a Christmas card from Sister Mimsy and Mother Sups, Sherry and Brandy, Mr and Mrs Pie or Maggie Bog, then you can get them. You have to go to our website, which is www.theisolationcreations.com. And uh, yeah, you can get a Christmas card from your characters. And a few people have got them already and they're really funny. They are they're handwritten. There's not, it's not just hello, happy Christmas, bye. No, you get a proper little story, little, little joke. And, and, proper, and some of them are really personal. Yeah. So get a, get a Christmas card if you want one. Only if you want one. Um, the three ninety nine. Somebody but... wrote the other day, like, um, "Yeah, I've just brought out the Sherry and Brandy one from last year. <laughs> Save a few quid." Mm. Three ninety nine. Uh, that includes postage. They're personalised. They're they're like specially designed by our Alan's made them all. So they're crafty cards. Anyway, finale time. Anyone who wants to go to bed, off you go for bed. And if you want to stay for a drink afterwards with us, we'll see you in a minute. We'd love to see you. Bye. <laughs> Downstairs and play. Don't want to. Ever since Lenny came, nobody likes me anymore. Oh, oh poor, poor Zippy. Zippy. Um, well, that was a that was a love triangle, wasn't it? That was. 
Now, I don't know. I think Jane left Rod for Freddy, I think. I think oh, they might have been a throuple. Um, yeah, Timmy says, look, Jane's a very sort of warbly high voice. Mm. <laughs> Timmy shared the video for Every Sperm is Sacred from Monty Python, which you will be able to see him with his legs for days back when he was um, a little uh, hoofer, a little um, Bonnie Langford hoofer. Um, Pete Petofsky says, is Scylla not doing a card for us? We didn't think we could do it like a real person. Well, we just do the characters that we play, yeah. haven't we? We do do Pat Butcher as well, but um, we could get in trouble, I think, for doing Pat Butcher. So we don't advertise it that much. Uh, <laughs> I hope you enjoyed a little bit of um, Rod, Jane and Freddy. I thought I always enjoy different. watching them, them, don't you? Yeah, because everyone's, everyone's doing the Scylla <laughs> now. You know, we've got Scylla. Do you want to look at this? Yeah. No, no, I don't think so. Because I've been around a million years. <laughs> I've got a mobile phone, but I ate it. You ate it? <laughs> oh, <laughs> I, ate it. I don't... We've got Scylla. I don't care. At the touch of a button. We're getting very original meals all of a sudden. <clears throat> oh, did you notice? Well, of course, don't I always? Well, it's my new meat cookery book from OXO. I thought I'd try a new recipe. The young Scylla had an OXO recipe of her own. It didn't come from a book. I helped myself to an orange and I helped myself to an oxo cube. I guess I was so eager to eat the orange and the oxo that it all blended into one. I thought, oh, I like this. And that, doesn't that look fabulous? Um, Do you see she cuts the orange that way? <laughs> Why would you be eager to eat an oxo cube? Perhaps you I can imagine you being eager to eat an orange. Perhaps it was like a sort of like, you know... Um, a tonic it kept, kept you going for a bit like a, maybe it's like, like a cup Scylla, of bovril Scylla's power maybe she needed like the earthiness of oxo but also the zing of orange for her hair I mean there's some good minerals and vitamins in there wasn't there there was so um I'm knackered today are you tired well we've had a busy week to be honest with you we did the um the quiz and then we had sort of friends staying um, for the weekend, the weekend. We, so we're out. We just had done some lovely stuff, didn't we? Went to a little, went to a church cafe. That was lovely because it was sat with the cafes inside the church, with all the sort of stained glass windows. We did that. Then we we sort of went around Scarborough, didn't we? You were slip sliding all over the oh, place because of the black ice. Honestly, and then you, you you had some sort of drama, didn't you? Um, so I had a dry, Yeah, I had a horrible time on yeah. Sunday and Saturday night. We had a bit of a weird time. Uh, Timmy Alexis says Jane was a right dirty cow. <laughs> she had them both. <laughs> there was another, and there was another Rod. Yeah. There was another one, wasn't there? There was an original one who then went on to be Bunny in El Dorado. So he was the original Rod. And oh, I don't, yeah, he was, wasn't he? I don't know if he had Jane. Timmy, I think you should get Rod, Jane and Freddy on your bed, but I think some of them might be dead. Is Freddy gone? Yeah, I think, I'm not sure who's dead, who's alive. Scylla says she was fuelled by Oxo. Um, Jason says the original one was Roger, so it was Roger, Roger, Jane, and Freddie. Roger, Jane, and Rod. Roger, Rod, and Jane. Was <laughs> what was the name of the trio? Because Freddie came late, didn't he? Roger, Rod, and Jane. I got ring to it. That really has it. Roger, 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 <clears throat> Roger, and Rod are both words for like. Shagging someone, aren't oh, they? Sh- Roger Jane and Rod Jane, but not Freddie Jane. Rod Jane and Roger, Chase Rigby says. <laughs> and Freddie's over the bridge. Carl says she loved the teapot and cover that you got. You got a you got a nun one, didn't you? Yeah, and there was also tea. a uh, angel one came to the table as well. It was, yeah, but I got a coffee. I don't the, like that cake. Looked very good, but we didn't have any, did we? <laughs> the cake did look very good. Yeah, it was lovely. It was very wintry, wasn't it, this weekend? It was lovely. It was proper Christmassy, wasn't it? <clears throat> uh, yeah, it was. It was lovely. Talking of rainbow, so people are talking about rainbow. <clears throat> when I got that song for you all, I, I discovered something called the Rainbow Toy Shop. Oh, okay. Let me see if I can show Alan it. I won't be able to show you it, but I'm going to show Alan and see if I can get a response from him. Like, let me see if I can find it. I might not be able to do this. Oh, on ITV. Oh, you mean like from the from the show? Right. Wait till you see this. So. Oh, 
Es... Oh. I'm, I'm trying to work out if I can get you to see this. Hmm. Hang on. Can you not put the link? Just put the link in. And they can look at their, on their, at their own perusal. Right. You'll be terrified. Um, Martin says, can you see it? <laughs> can you see it? Are you I, looking I at it? I just want to show Alan. So it's got Zippy, George and Bungle in it, but... Tell people what you're seeing. Well, I'm seeing wrong things, wrong voices. What does Bungle look like? Oh, he looks weird. And what does George talk like? I know, you want some cup of tea? <laughs> he was really camp, wasn't he, originally? George was a very soft spoke. Is Zippy not in it? Yeah, hang on. I can't do George now. But Bungle looks weird. Different. Bungle looks different. Bungle's like in a sort of slinky sort of onesie. Do you know what Bungle looks like? You know that I'm I'm, I'm not into it myself, but these the sexual sexual <laughs> fetish of furries. You know when the people wear like fur outfits. Bungle well looks like a furry. And he's got really sort of tight tight legs, and not like a bear leg. <laughs> Um, you can sort of see his moose knuckle. You know how Bungle, our Bungle, had like you could see the the sort of joins, so you knew how he'd get it out of it. This one, I think he's in there for good. He's like sewn into it. Ooh. Right, Zippy's about to appear. Are you ready? Yeah. It looks better than that. It looks fantastic. Oh, oh no, the voices are all wrong. And the bad thing about um, Bungle. Is his voice, you can tell he's in a, a bear head. Do you know what I mean? What, like he's... No, you can hear like... Uh, that, 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 that. Wait till you see what's going to happen now. It's going to happen. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, yes. <gasps> Another furry's at the door. <laughs> well, I might oh. save that. Maybe I'll download yeah. it and show little clips. Yeah. Because I did, I was well unaware of that. So what would be quite fun is if we could play it, like on our little director's commentary here, we could play it there. Do you? And we could get Alan's reactions to things. Maybe oh. we'll do that. Maybe I'll get some little bits to see Alan's reaction. Ooh. Lots I'm, of people have... Martin said, am I aroused now? <laughs> Martin also says, it, is it is it three, three, cup, three cups and a bungle? <laughs> Silla says, Alan looks disturbed. <coughs> um, Jason Jason Darcy knows of it and says there were two other puppets called Mooney and Shiny. Well, I hate it's like you know when the Golden Girls then became that weird hotel with Cheech and Chong. Yeah, it's like don't mess with things, just <laughs> just, just don't, just don't touch. Darren Bramley, I thought Darren had gone to bed. Darren says the original Bungle was also far frightening. The original Bungle's quite terrifying. Yeah, he was. He had like really big eyes, didn't he? Um, Darren was asking how Peggy is. Let me see if she's there. I think she's on the rug down here. Oh, she's she's right down oh. there. She's let's see if we can see her. There she is. She's underneath the tripod. Peggy. Peggy. Oh, she's not going to do anything. She's there. She's sulking because we're ready to go. Oh, she went out today with us, didn't she? Yeah. Uh, Martin says I should get some videos so we can put them there so you can talk about them. Because I'm I'm new to some things, aren't I? Loads of stuff. Even just things like Breakfast Club trailer. Oh, oh no, what about St Elmo's fire oh, trailer? Oh, no. No. Because <laughs> he'd be livid about it. Oh, no. I don't do American school things. <laughs> it's so alien to me. Right, tell everyone, while Martin's here, because Martin, Martin can tell us we can go and have one, tell them about the Yorkshire pudding you witnessed <gasps> oh. today. Well, the Dawlish boys came to visit the weekend, and we thought well, the nice thing to do is go to the Eat Me Cafe. And some of you have sampled the, their wonderful food. And we'd seen on their Christmas menu um, a Christmas Yorkshire pudding with things in it, even for vegetarians. And um, we're like, oh, yeah, can't wait for that. We got and we'd left it too late. We left it late. Didn't Saturday we? night. It Saturday was night. Was, all it gone. Off, it all, all fell gone. down, as, as they do. Uh, but I saw one today Ooh. being, like, carried through the cafe. And we're not talking a little round one. We're talking a big... Rectangle beast. Big rectangular Yorkshire pud full of all Christmas trimmings. So we're going to go and have, definitely have one of those. Going to go we? and have it. Nibs, bubs. Do you want to come? Um, Pete Potofsky said he would love to see your reaction to things. So 
on the little screen. Um, Timmy just said, um, with me mentioning the Golden Girls and the Golden Palace, that was what it was called. Um, he always thought they should have brought in Elaine Stritch to play Gloria, Dorothy's sister, to oh, keep it all yeah. in the same house. That'd be a good idea, wouldn't it? Yeah, it would be. Is that why they went to the hotel? Because Dorothy left. Because yeah. B. Arthur They didn't want quit. to leave, did they? They were they, they were on a they were on a, on a on a high and she she'd had enough. I think that's most when they Elaine Stritch would be great. You, I love the thing I love about Elaine Stritch is when she like just wears tights and a white shirt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but Dorothy did turn up for a couple of episodes, didn't she? Not in the Golden Palace. Are you sure? I don't think so. Did she make a couple of special appearances? I uh, thought she did. People will know. Jason will know, or Timmy will know. Did B. Arthur ever appear in the Golden Palace? I don't think so. No, not yet. Not not the odd episode. I wouldn't have thought so. She'd gone. <coughs> she was dead famous because of something called Maud, which we yeah. never got. And also another thing we never got, which was. The Facts of Life, a TV show about a girls' school. Yeah, she did turn mm. up. B. Arthur did turn up. <coughs> Alan knows. Peggy's. She's about now. Oh, where is she now? There she Move is. Move the camera so people can see her. Oh, what am I doing? Going up. 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 Oh my, Mr. Bramley, there's camera work. There she is. There she is near the heater. See, she's got her own little heater. Peggy. No, she's not bothered. Um, she did do a couple of ep- episodes. A lot of people are saying. I bet they, I bet they have to pay her well. Um, Tracy loved Maud. Um, it's an American thing. We never got it, Tracy. Or the Facts of Life, which has got a really funky theme tune. And I think, even though me and Alan don't know anything about mm. it, we should recreate the Facts of Life theme tune. Yeah. Because it means we get to be like four girls at a girls' school, which would be funny in itself. Um, Lee Fern said he's loving. He loved the old TV, uh, kids TV from the eighties, uh, the trapdoor, button moon, super gran. They're bringing back super gran, aren't they? Super Ted and Fraggle Rock. Bringing back super gran. I think so. Is, is the rumor that they're bringing back super gran? Who's going to be super gran? Stand back, Spider Man, Superman, a doop a doop. Um, uh, yeah, she did a two part special, and Alexis Sale was apparently in it. Um, Jason Darcy says they brought B. Arthur back to save it as it was failing in the ratings but it only lasted one series mm. Mr. Venus says we've got Maud the DVD box oh, oh, set she's got a really good um, theme tune isn't there Richard Hoshuli says how about doing Alice again Richard that didn't I don't know that it didn't come here is Alice the, the thing from the Brady Bunch uh, uh, Ribbons Bob and Stuff says Maud is on YouTube and the Facts of Life was on the early days of Sky but we didn't know it um, J- uh, Alice, we don't know. Are they really bringing back Super Grant, says Lee? Um, Sarah Simpson's just burst in with my favourite comment of the night, which is, I've just eaten a packet of crisps. It was Christmas pudding flavour. Did we had some last year? We did, we, we had them. They weren't too bad. We had them at Nibbles and Bubbles, didn't we? <gasps> oh, Mark Mondayman's off for a late night ploughman. Oh! Ooh, that's the sort of thing I'd love. Oh, you see, that's the thing about December and Christmas. You can go to the fridge and enjoy yourself. I've been promised a grazing board at the weekend. And it isn't from me. Uh, Timmy says, I loved at... Timmy, I quite like the fact Timmy's just replying to his own comment constantly. But he says, I loved Alice. It was set in a cafe. We don't know it, do we? Who's Alice? We'll have to look up Alice. Alice was in Mel's Diner. Alice was shown on Channel 4 around the time it launched in the 80s. Scylla's back to a crypt. Ta-ra, Scylla. Ta-ra, Scylla. Ta-ra. Um, Jack Black was in the episode B. Arthur was in as a cab driver in um, Golden Golden Diner, Golden Palace. Alice. We'll have to look up Alice. We need to look up Alice. We need to look up Facts of Life. Mm. And we need to look up Maud. We need funky theme tunes. There's one called Buzz and Buddies where Tom Hanks is in drag. And you ha- you're having a sharing be. board at the weekend, not a grazing board. Which would be a bit... <laughs> I ain't sharing. Won't share I ain't it. sharing. Won't share it. <laughs> and then I'm going to go to sleep and be carried to bed. <gasps> oh, oh, there's food. Oh, there's food. food in my food oh. porn coming in. Oh. Look who's come in. Louise Dudman. Louise Dudman. Maybe she's been lurking all along. 
Martin hides off to Spoons. Are you really? We'd come down and meet you. Well, now? Are you really going there? Because we could come down. Uh, RLO watched Life and Loves of a She-Devil last night as it's been on the radio. It was as good and weird as I remember it from the 80s. Bobo. Mary Fisher. Um, All right, loves. Right, we should let you go. What are you having for your supper? Tonight, I'm having stew and dumplings. He's having a dumpling. Um, all right, darlings. No night, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Have a lovely weekend. Have a lovely rest of the week, and we'll see you next Wednesday. I don't, I, I don't know if we are off to spoons. We might be. <laughs> Martin, text us if you're going to spoons. <coughs> Louis, He's Louis stuck Dudman, up in bed. Dudman, come to spoons. All right, darlings. Uh, we'll see you soon. Have a wonderful week. Lovely weekend. Keep warm. And uh, enjoy preparations for Christmas. And we will end with our little tribute to Dean Sullivan, the lovely Jimmy Corkill. So let's have a look at him and Julia Brogan giving it lots in Children in Need. Night! Bye! And here with their own song, let them know, the cast of Brookside with special guest Ruby Turner.
you fancy joining me for a little bit of fun? Games galore. And lots of prizes to be won. You never know who you're going to meet. And don't bring the kids. It's not going to be f***ing suitable. Oh, we've done a lot of moving to do.